Hi guys, welcome back to my creative cave. This is Diana with Creative TV and today um, I, I wanted to start off with something I purchased at the flea market the weekend and over the weekend and I, I had an idea right away as soon as I got it and I wanted to um, show you guys what I did with it. I started with an 8x10 piece of scrap play, uh, plywood and um, I did some stenciling on there. This is a, a CTW, uh, I think, word or something like that. I'll link it down below. Um, but this is um, a big stencil, the 12 by 12. And I just used a little bit of words here and there. I just wanted some texture. I didn't want just a plain board as a background. After the fiber paste that I applied with the stencil was dried, I wanted to do a faux um, staining on the on the um, wood without doing a, the actual staining. <laughs> so what I did is I did a wash down brown, and um, I used my coffee water as always, and I just um, really um, worked it in there. It it absorbs the um, the paint right away. I did a little bit of sanding just to distress it a little bit more. Then to make it a little richer or darker, I did a very watered down black acrylic. And this one is mostly, you know, coffee water, just a couple of drops of the black. Uh, it was just to make that dark, the brown a little darker. It wasn't just because I wanted black. It was just to make it a little darker. I did the same technique on this tool that you guys see here. Anyways, uh, moving forward after I did that, I wanted to... I uh, seal it in so I waxed it. I used regular um, mean wax uh, wood um, wax. I'm sorry I didn't show you guys the the can. I realized that after, but what I did is just just I just um, grab um, one of those um, like rags to to do your um, dishes, and I rub it with that. I polish it with that, and um, I went back over and over, and I just polished it. It gives it a little bit of a sheen but that's because of the wax and after that I wanted to go back to my letters I roughed them up a little bit because I used that wax I wanted to take some of that wax off so they can take in that color and I did a little bit of gold I played with different tones of gold on the letters I didn't put that much I just wanted um, a little bit of that gold like if it was gold at one point and then it faded away Anyways, up to uh, now is the structure, so I've decided to do four panels, and I just this is simple math. I divided the center, then I went out, um, and I divided. I gave it a one inch gap between each rod, so I marked it down, um, and I spaced it so that the the two end rods are four and a quarter. Um, away from the sides so centered a four and a half four and a half and then one inch in between uh, I mean four and a quarter but you know I guess it depends on each frame and everybody has their own frame so what I did after that is um, I grabbed my drill my drill bit and I made a hole the size of the little rods and by the way these are not rods I don't know why I keep on calling them rods but they're um, skewers uh, for the food so um, the bamboo skewers and I just grab a drill bit that's the same um, um, size of the the rod and I just cut them after that I just cut the little rod up to a size now remember the hole is a little deeper and you want your rod to catch that depth you don't want it to make it so that it falls off you want it to be able to bend it a little bit and it goes in there not tight but snug so that it holds in but you're still able to flip through your book or through your display your fit through display and um here i'm just painting the tips that i think i'm gonna are gonna be showing off after i do that and then i cut um to make the this the panel of the display i use a uh, file folders and these are usual folders that i let my daughter my i have a toddler she likes to paint so i let her use the these, these uh, file folders and then i just use them after that They're, it's my way of recycling and sometimes when i really like what she did i'll use them on my crafts um you might have seen me using them on my junk journals or 
Um, sometimes I cut out flowers from there or birds. I've used it many times uh, when I like the colors and combinations she makes. I prefer to use them as which, how she makes it, not as a scrap. But sometimes she chooses these funky colors and I just have to <laughs> recycle it. Anyway, so once I cut my, pa my papers, I glue in the rod in the center uh, with regular Elmo's glue. But because I didn't want that uh, moisture um, look, you know how when you put a uh, wet glue on paper, it wrinkles? I didn't want that to happen on the rest of the paper, so I used a uh, double-sided tape. I don't have the gun for it, so I used you guys see me rolling the the um, the circle all around my paper. It wasn't it's not meant to do that, but I don't have the gun and I just use it like that. I don't use it that often. I always end up using my glue. But when I need it done, it's that's just how I do it. One day when I grow up, I'll buy me a a, a dispenser or um I'll I'll do a fun me page. Just kidding, but um. So I'll do um. Uh, once I do all this with all four of the sticks, I end up um wrapping the paper. I mean, painting the little sides of them. Um, but you guys will see that later. Um, for now, I'm letting them dry. I'm letting them um be uh uh hard so I can cut out this little corner. I didn't like how they like ended up being all corners. So what I did is I cut into it. What I should have done is I used, I should have like cut a circle or half a circle before I fold them in, in there and to, on with the rod, but I didn't think about it before. So now, you know, you got to do the aftermath kind of thing. So do it before you glue it down. It'd be easier for you guys, but since I did it after, um, it wasn't that bad. So I fit them in, make sure that they work fine. And they did. Um, now because I cut it the way I did with the little pliers, sometimes they get squeezed kind of sideways. So I sanded that down so that, uh, they fit in there right. So now it's time to, for me to distress the frame. I didn't like the yellowish gold that it had, you know, that fake yellow. So I decided to start by, uh, painting the black. The frame is, um, is brown and gold and I wanted to do more of a black tone than and gold rather than um than the brown but then I don't know it's just crazy me crazy my crazy idea and I I kind of was enjoying it but then I was like I need color in the frame I need I need it to look even older than just you know black so I decided to do a little bit more of a a colorful or a rusted dis distress you guys will see it in a minute I'm too busy doing the wiping and right now you guys see the difference I really like the, the difference and um I don't like that in the video the colors don't come out as good as as they do as they are on live but it's because I'm using my phone to record the videos and when I you know get a chance to get a camera then you guys will definitely see the colors but you guys can see kind of like that difference here up close. How it makes a big difference from the brown to the black. Brown to the black. And um, I like it better. But that's not where I stopped. I have this turquoise paint that I got on clearance because um, I guess somehow it opened on the store, made a mess. And um, then it went to the clearance aisle and I picked it up only because of that and what I did here is with the turquoise and I realized it's not with gold but it's like more with like um I think brass I think or bronze one of them to rust uh this kind of color but I decided to do that same tone here in the gold and what I did is I imagined where if this frame would have um had some water falling on it where would it fall into um, and it would stay in the crevices and it would drip and it would smear and where where the water stay and where would it run to
Now for my next uh, step. Now I was scared, very scared, to use these colors because I usually use these colors when I'm rusting like metal or I'm rusting, um, just rusting, but I've never like really used it on rusting gold, especially when I use turquoise too. So I was scared that it was going to look kind of funny or like if I threw paint in it. And so that's why I started uh, taking, putting some on and taking some off. And I figured, okay, I'm going to put some on and I could always just wash it off. They are acrylic. And, um, you know, but I wanted to try it. I was, you know, I'm, I'm a scary cat sometimes, but sometimes I push myself because it might end up looking okay. So I pushed myself and I worked on this uh, red and orangey tones on the gold and it's not accurate like you know like gold doesn't rust these colors and I don't think it rusts I think it like antiques or like patinas but it doesn't rust so me putting these colors is kind of like my make-believe idea and me wanting to you know distress this uh, I think I paid three dollars for this frame so you know, this $3 frame and having fun with it and playing with my colors. I love playing with um, distressing uh, different in different formats. So I was, um, you guys will see how I take most of it off, put it back on, take it off. Because I'm scared of applying these colors. But the more I put on and the more, you know, I guess I sell myself on the idea. But I kind of end up do li liking it. I do um, uh, a lot, most of the red goes on first then I kind of put a little bit of that orange and now uh, also keep in mind that these colors when they dry they become very opaque they're not as bright as you see them on the screen right now you guys will see in the pictures after that this is not the color it really stays they 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 actually like come down a lot <laughs> from their bright colors and what I did is the same concept, like where would I, where would the most rust be? Where would my, the most water damage be at? So I'm thinking corners and like drip lines and um, like where would the water like make a pool? And usually you guys see the little lines. I'd always see water kind of like if it falls into that crevice, I see the water would stay amongst the line um so sort of like run along and then pull down i don't know i i i guess i spent too much time <laughs> watching water but um as me as much as i like distressing uh sometimes i feel like it's important to if you want to mimic nature watch nature you know so um i kind of did a lines but it, it i didn't like how they <laughs> looked but um, then I got a little creative, but you know, I was able to, oh, you could always like just take it off, put it back on and I could, I could have uh, added more turquoise. I don't think I did, but I could have just washed it off and added more turquoise at the end of the day. And um, you guys will see me, I put red and orange sometimes where the blue is. Sometimes I put it where the blue is not. And I started putting some of these colors where on that fabric of the frame um, my next step is uh, to add uh, oh I don't know if you guys saw that I painted that I ended up not just painting the little um, wooden skewer or bamboo skewer in the inside I painted the outside uh, edge as well and this what I'm doing here I'm doing the double-sided tape but okay, so I'm doing three sides on the folder itself and I'm making sure I go straight, straight on the straight line because um, I don't know if I, you guys will be able to see on this video, but so that, you know, I don't, I don't do the wet part of the wet glue. I'm aware I can use other stuff, but I think that um, this double sided tape is very strong. So I really enjoy it. So instead of me trying to figure out the math on this one, I figure I do 
the three sides first, then the fourth side, which is the side that's going to go in the in inner part, uh, closer to the skewer, I'm going to um, do the three parts on one side, um, and then the one skewer, the one um, inside. <laughs> I think I'm going to let the video speak for itself because I'm like, uh, uh, uh. But um, I think you guys can understand what I'm saying here. Um, doing the three sides on the paper on the panel and the fourth side on the actual paper, it's a it made it easier for me to apply it because I was able to move it around and I didn't have that many sticky parts. But at the same time, I was able to get that edge straight in the front, and I like that edge uh, how it looks. The little distressed coffee paper anyway so i figured um the board was became a little boring after i did all that chaos on the on the frame itself so i figured it was too simple too straightforward on that board so i put a little bit more black and now this bottle that i have of black is more um i put water in it so because i use it so much to distress all my stuff uh, I have a prepared black acrylic little bottle with water in it. And um, I don't remember if it's coffee water or just straight out water, to be honest with you guys. But um, in, a, in any case, it's st still um, just um, watered down black. And I make those drip lines just as uh, if the water would have came on, the, on this um, piece of wood as well. So just dripping. Now to assemble it. Um, see how the colors are like more uh, dimmed down? They're not like circus colors anymore. And so I'm attaching it to the back. It's still a little wet. So because I have that gap on the bottom, just because it's on the bottom and I don't want like the weight of the piece of wood to come down, I'm just going to tuck in there another piece of rod and I'm going to just glue it there. And that's it. I'm not going to glue the board down. Um, itself, I'm just going to use this very heavy, heavy duty industrial tape on the back. Um, it's a tape that they use for, um, I don't know, but it was given to us by a family friend and he uses it for his, um, I want to remember, um, what scaffolding. So they wrap those scaffolding. So for building constructions and stuff. So I know it's very hard and it will hold it up. And, you know, the backboard is really not holding any weight. It's just for the board itself to stay. I could have used tape and it would have stayed. But moving forward. So now it's time for me to grab all my tags and display and figure out what I want. I'm using a painter's tape or gaffer's tape because, um, one, I don't want the, the tag to get damaged. Two. I don't want the panel to get damaged. Like if I decide or I wanted to replace some of these tags or move them around. But the gaffer's tape, you know, holds tight. So, for the moment of truth, I'm putting the piece of papers or the panels. I think I want to call them panels. They are panels, right? Anywho, I'm putting the panels in there. And kind of like the way I had them, I thought about them. Now, these are not all my tags. They're not my best or my worst. They're just, some of them are sentimental to me. Some of them are my first ones. Some of them, you know, there was a reason for them or some of them, there's just because I liked one little thing on them. But uh, these are the, I think, let me see. Each panel has four and there's four panels. So 16 tags out of my collection. And um, these are it. I played with the formation on them, but hey, okay. I hope you like it. I hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoy it. You know, you guys can see a little bit of the aftermath on my video, um, on my desk, sorry. Oh, I thought about putting this little tag there, but I changed my mind, I took it off. Um, and this is where I put it, I put it on the side. I am gonna eventually hang it, but for now it sits here. I of course did the decided to do the corners, the can corners, 
and I did my maker's table. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Till next time, stay safe, guys.